Hello everybody, welcome back. This is lesson two in our unit 11. So yesterday we started the new unit with how to, with the kind of what redox was in general and how to assign oxidation numbers. So the plan for today is to continue practicing with that and to use that information to determine whether or not something is a redox reaction tonight. Re is a redox reaction. So there are a few things that you need to do or that would be helpful. And so the first thing is to look at the redox number line because that's the first thing I'm starting with. It is a separate document. And then the identifying redox reactions CER practice. I'll walk you through um, a few examples of that. And then the rest of the time is yours to practice as you see fit. So it looks like there is a castle learning due tonight. The first of the redox unit. Uh, it's titled something along the lines of oxidation numbers and redox reactions. Um, just make sure that you are following the calendar in case things are changed. So this picture is a great help if you're kind of struggling with how numbers work and what this all means. So oxidation, like we had talked about yesterday, means you are losing electrons. So remember we talked about Leo, the lion says Ger. So that meant lose electron oxidation and then gain electron is reduction. So in oxidation, if you're losing electrons, that means you're getting more positive. Because remember, electrons are negative. So if you're losing these negative things, you're becoming more positive. So if you're becoming more positive, the oxidation number increases because you're moving towards the right. Now, if you're losing these electrons, that means these are electrons when we write something called half reactions are going to be written as a product. Now, oppositely speaking, with reduction, that means the oxidation number needs to go down. It needs to get more negative. So the only way to get more negative is to have more negative stuff. So that's when we're talking about gaining electrons. So if you're gaining electrons, you're getting more of this negative stuff. Your oxidation number will decrease or reduce. And if you're gaining these electrons, they're written as a reactant. So that's something you'll see tomorrow and the day after, and pretty much for the rest of the unit, when we write something called half reactions. So this is a great kind of thing to help you. So let's jump into a few questions. So if we're going from, so just to help me out and to help you guys out, Leo says Ger. If we're going from zero to plus three, we're getting more positive. So if we're getting more positive, we are, that is oxidation. And if it's oxidation, because electrons are, remember here is Leo, lost. So if we're getting more positive, that is oxidation. Number two, or the second bullet, we're going from positive two to positive one, that is reduction because electrons are gained. Negative two to negative four, that is reduction because electrons are gained. Now would be a good time to kind of pause this, finish the rest on your own, and then check your work in a second. Negative one to zero, you're getting bigger. That is oxidation because electrons are lost. Plus two to zero is reduction. You are getting smaller. And electrons are gained during reduction. Negative one to positive one, you are increasing. That is oxidation because electrons are lost. Once you're able to kind of wrap your head around gaining electrons being negative 
and then losing electrons being positive, that makes this a little bit easier. So with the last four, we have, these are examples of half reactions. We are gonna learn how to write them later on this week. But just right now, I want you to take note of where they are in a reaction. So for this one, they are before the arrow, which means they are a reactant. If they are a reactant, that means they are being gained. And if we have electrons being gained, that is a reduction. You can also see we're going from positive three iron to iron zero. That's also a reduction. You can say electrons are gained or they're written as a reactant. Either one of those would work. For the next one, these are written as a product and we're going from zero to plus three becoming more positive. So both those things means it's oxidation. Because these electrons are lost because they are written as a product. Next one, copper. We have electrons as a product and we're going from zero to positive two. So that we're getting more positive. That is oxidation. Electrons are lost. And again, if they're lost, they are written as a product. Last one, we have the electrons written as a reactant. And we can also see that we're going from zero oxidation state to negative one. So that is a reduction. Again, because these electrons are gained. And if they're gained, they are written as a reactant. So that's kind of how this works. Let's kind of jump into the main portion of today's practice. So on the sheet that's titled, Is This a Redox Reaction? You'll see that there is a lovely sample poster thing that we put together. And on the bottom, there are 10 different reactions. So the 10 different reactions, your first job is to determine whether or not those reactions are redox or not. And then to help practice, make two mini posters. You don't need to be like colorful or not, but if you want to make them super pretty, by all means, go and do that. For at least two of the questions, two of the equations, that just makes it easier for you to kind of grasp this material. And again, this is just practice for your benefit and we're not gonna collect this. But if you want to do this, make it nice and pretty and send it to your chem teacher, they will probably be pretty happy with that. And again, that's totally up to you. So let's just look at these first and see if these reactions are redox or not redox reactions. So remember the tip we had said yesterday and yesterday, because it's only the day two. Um, if you have a single replacement reaction, that is always, always, always a redox reaction. If you have any element by itself, and then that same element is not by itself later on, that is a redox reaction. One of the things we had said though is not a redox reaction is a double replacement. So any double replacement, so two, react, two compounds to start with, two compounds to end with, not redox reactions. So if we look at this model, um, we can, again, these are kind of your hypotheses, and then you can kind of test this with your little mini CER poster. So we have iron by itself. Remember, any element by itself has an oxidation number of zero. When iron's in a compound, it has an oxidation state of something other than zero. So that means oxidation that, that iron changed. So something else had to have also changed. So if something changed, that is redox. So now would be a good time to pause this, run through these 10 quickly, determine if it is redox, if it's not redox, and then play this back to check your answers. So number one, you have an example of a double replacement. That would not be a redox reaction. Number two, you'll notice that you have oxygen by itself 
as a reactant. So when it's part of a product, when, it, when it's part of a compound in a product, it means it had to have changed. Something else changed as well, so that is a redox reaction. Three and four are both double replacements, so they are not redox reactions. Number five, this is a great example of a single replacement. You have something by itself at the beginning, you have something by itself at the end. So without even like doing all of this work, you know it has to have changed. So that is redox. Number six is a double replacement. So that is not redox. Again, nothing is by itself. And if you were to kind of, if you don't trust me, and you want to go through this in more detail and look at the oxidation numbers for each of these elements, you'll see that they're the same the entire time. Number seven is a single replacement reaction because you start with copper by itself and with silver by itself. So that is redox. Number eight is a interesting type of decomposition reaction because uh, we're breaking stuff up. Again, nothing is by itself. It is not a redox reaction. It is now 12 o'clock when I'm recording this, so that is what that lovely alarm is in the background. Um, number 9 and 10 are both single replacement reactions because you both start with something by itself at the beginning and end with something by itself at the end. So those are both redox reactions. So as long as you're able to kind of identify it that way, that is good. That is the shortcut. But to kind of get more practice, even with identifying oxidation numbers for each atom in a compound, the poster helps. So I want to go through two examples with you. The model and then number nine, because it's number nine is kind of tricky. So you can say, and again, all these equations are done on the key with the long box method. So if you ever get stuck along the way, because I'm not going to go over all of them, that's a good place to check. So our claim, we can say, you know, hey, we have iron by itself. You can say this is a redox reaction. Again, RXN is an abbreviation for reaction. So if you see that, that's what it means. So now let's do, we need our evidence. And that's going to be the chart for each of the compounds. So let's do this one in green. We have Fe2O3, FeO subscript, oxidation number total. Okay, we know that total has to be zero. We have two Fe's and three O's. Iron has a few options, so let's save that one for last. O is minus two. If we have three of those, that's a total of minus six. That means we have to have a total of positive six for Fe. And if you have two irons bringing a total of positive six, that means each individual iron has a plus three oxidation state. When we look at CO, we have CO, leave some space, subscript, oxidation number, total. Making these tables is so much fun. Okay, it's a neutral compound, so we know that has to be zero. We have one carbon, one oxygen, Carbon does have a few options, so if you save that for last, that will be easier. Oxygen has a minus two charge, and if there's one of them, you have a total of minus two. It means you have to have a total of positive two to make the compound neutral. And then if you have that one carbon, that means carbon has a positive two oxidation state. If we look at this iron by itself, we can say Fe, has an oxidation number of zero because it 
is by itself. And then if we look at, I need another color, let's do black. CO2, CO subscript box total. Again, it's a neutral compound, so we know that total has to be zero. We have one carbon, two oxygens. Oxygen is still negative two. If you have two of those, that's a total of negative four. That means we need a positive four in total. And now we have one carbon to bring that total positive four charge. So it is positive four. So I'm not gonna write the whole explanation because it is on the model and it is in the key. But if you notice, iron starts with a positive three oxidation state and ends with a zero. So going from positive three to zero, which is being reduced. And if you're being reduced, that means you're gaining electrons. And then carbon starts at positive two and ends at positive four. If you're getting more positive, you lost electrons. That means it is oxidation. And so these two things happen at the same time. Because these two things change throughout the reaction, that makes it a redox reaction. So that's what your reasoning would be in words if you were to write it down. And that does support your claim. So number nine, I want to go through with you just finding the oxidation states for these two compounds because they are a little bit tricky. So whatever you think your claim is, we already went through what this actually is. Um, let's just go through how to find the oxidation numbers for these two compounds. Oops. So, oh my god. Okay. Take three, write the compound, then the separate elements. Subscript, oxidation number, total. Okay, we have a neutral compound, so we know it has to be zero. Um, we have one copper, one sulfur, and four oxygens. So we know oxygen has to be negative two. And if we have four of them, that means we have a total of negative eight. So we've talked about how oxygen is negative eight. And so something plus something plus negative eight has to give you zero. So this takes a little bit of extra thinking, but I believe in all of you. So copper has two options, one, plus one, and plus two. Sulfur has a whole list of different oxidation states. So here's where the thinking comes in. If we have, we know we need to have, these two things need to have a total of positive eight. And we only have one of each. So that means we have to have, we need, well, they need to add up to um, eight. So copper has plus one. But sulfur, there is no plus seven option. So we know that plus one option for copper can't work. So if we use the plus two option for copper, that means you have a total of positive two. And then that makes sulfur's box a little bit easier. That has to be positive six. And again, if there is one of them, the oxidation number for copper, for sulfur, sorry, is positive six. So that's kind of where that extra step of thinking needs to come into play. And just to quickly do this one with you. Z N S O. Leave some space if you can. Subscript oxidation number total. Ah. Okay. So here we have one zinc, one sulfur, and four oxygen. We know oxygen is negative two, so that is a negative eight charge. 
So again, with this one, zinc has options, and sulfur has options. But if we look at this reaction, we already we know zinc has to change. We know copper has to change. So generally, with these redox reactions, only two different elements will stick will change. So that means sulfur will still be positive six, and that means zinc has to be positive two. So the rest of it, these two are zero because they are by themselves. And you can explain why this is or is not considered a redox reaction. So the rest of the time, well not time, it's your time, but whatever you wanted to do in terms of practice, again, making these posters, this is something that I had made in class uh, last year or the year before. And so if you want to make something like this, by all means, go ahead. If you just want to scribble it on paper for the practice, do that. Uh, again, we're not going to collect this, but if you wanted to send this to your chem teacher, be like, oh, hey, look what I did. Pretty sure that would put a smile on their face. On that note, that is it. Have a wonderful day.